Ladies and gentlemen, it is, come on, you know what it is. It is Thursday Live. Yes, it's time for us to take a deep dive into God's Word. And it's time for us to have a greater awareness and understanding of how to apply God's Word to every area of our lives. I mean, literally, this is the day that the Lord has made. We do rejoice and we're glad in it. Come on. Are you rejoicing right there? Come on. You guys know what to do in the chat. Go ahead and just set the chat on fire with your comments, with your questions, with your thoughts. Come on. You know how we do this. We tag a few people who we think this message could be an encouragement to. So I want to challenge you. Go ahead. Tag a few people who you don't normally tag. Now, you guys know this is a believer's conversation. So on Thursday nights, we're typically delving into matters that pertain to the application of faith uh, for the believer. So uh, tag someone who is a believer and just say, hey, I think this could be an encouragement to you. Is that all right? So we're going to dive into God's word. Uh, we're going to receive our gifts uh, tonight, those who give their tithe and their offering during the Thursday live. And we have a few announcements uh, as well. So let me go ahead and drop these announcements. Remember, 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 April 5th, 6th, and 7th. Come on, we're talking about it. We're going to keep saying it. April 5th, 6th, and 7th is when we have our celebration weekend, the 20th celebration. Come on, put those praise hands in the chat. It's going to be amazing. I mean, we're going to praise God and worship him. We're going to have fun. We're going to encounter some great gifts. Uh, I mean, it's going to be fantastic. Some men and women will come from across the state and some even from across the nation to be with us um, as we celebrate. So again, get your ducks in a row. Get your duckies in a row. Come on. We're going to look amazing. We're going to give amazing. We're going to have an amazing meal, amazing people. So get ready. Come on, get your seed ready. Come on, get your 20th anniversary seed ready. Get your 20th anniversary outfit together. We'll be dropping the, um, the color schemes coming up within the next couple of weeks going into March. So you will have, well, no, no. Yeah. Next Sunday, we'll be dropping those color schemes. Um, so it's going to be amazing. So again, keep those dates uh, in mind. Secondarily, listen, this coming Sunday is what? Champ Academy Sunday. Yes, it is. Make sure you get your uh, your nieces, your nephews, your cousins. Tell them that they're between first grade and eighth grade. We want them at champions. Is that right? And yes, Bishop Omeek and I, we will be in the house this Sunday and we'll be sharing and we believe God uh, will be glorified. Is that all right? So listen, you know how to give. Uh, you'll see the message pinned in the chat, 803-897-8009. That's the text message. All you need to do is just put 20501000, whatever it is in the chat, hit send uh, on that text message. And of course, you'll get a link back to complete your uh, your gift. Or you can do the cash app, dollar sign, T-O-C-2020. Praise God. And then... Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, uh, as we get ready for the word of God, uh, we're going to go into prayer. Uh, pray. We're going to pray over the seed that you sow. Pray over our time in the word. And we're going to dig in. Is that all right? We're going to dig straight in. Father, thank you. Thank you for the men and the women who have uh, joined the broadcast live or by replay. Thank you for their lives and what their lives matter. Thank you that as they sow their seed, as they plant good seed into the soil of your kingdom, that you multiply their seed 30, 60, and 100 fold. You compound their seed. Father, you said they lay up for themselves uh, treasures in heaven. Father, you said in your word that every man reaps as he sows. If he sows sparingly, he reaps sparingly. If he sows bountifully, he reaps bountifully. So thank you, Father, for the bountiful reaping in the various areas of life based upon the seed that we have sown. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that we can't buy anything from heaven. Heaven doesn't need dollars and cents. But yet, because money matters so much to us in our world, we can surely show you that we trust you by sowing it, by separating ourselves from it, by releasing it and demonstrating our faith in you to do what we can't do in our own strength or in our own ability. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, Father, as we get ready to receive the word of God, thank you for allowing your word to dwell in us richly in our wisdom and spiritual understanding and the knowledge of your will. The eyes of our understanding being enlightened. Let us see what we didn't see. Let us understand what we didn't understand. Let us know what we didn't know. But ultimately, let us receive and do. 
because it's not the hearer of the word that is blessed, but the doer of the word that is blessed. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, come on, clap those hands wherever you are. Clap those hands. And then, of course, put those praise hands in the chat. Come on, if you have great expectation, put those praise hands in the chat. Come on, if you've got a great anticipation, you know, come on, put those praise hands in the chat. Hallelujah. Well, what we are teaching on today, still in the series of more good news. <laughs> Come on, you know, we're not leaving that. Come on, we're still in the series of what? More good news. Come on, put hashtag what? More good news in the chat. Come on, go ahead and do that. And we're going to be teaching for about 15 to 20 minutes uh, today. And we're teaching on partnering with goodness. Come on, say it with me. Partnering with goodness, how to partner with goodness. And there are several uh, components to this that we'll be digging into over the next few weeks. But uh, today, when we're talking about partnering with goodness, what I want to do is I want to give you a foundation of what partnership is. And then I want to show you how goodness is the only thing you should partner with. Let me say it again. Goodness is the only thing that you should partner with. Now, let's begin by looking at 2 Kings chapter 7. 2 Kings chapter 7, and we're going to read verse 3, uh, and we'll go down. Now, there were four leprous men at the entrance of the gate, and they said one to another, Why are we sitting here until we die? If we say we will enter the city, the famine is in the city, and and we shall die there. If we sit here, we will die also. Now, therefore, come, let us surrender to the army of the Syrians. If they keep us alive, we shall live. If they kill us, we shall only die. And they arose at twilight to go into the camp of the Syrians. And when they had come to the outskirts of the Syrian camp, to their surprise, no one was there. For the Lord caused the army of the Syrians to hear the noise of chariots and great horses and the noise of a great army. And they said one to another, look, the king of Israel has hired against us the kings of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to attack us. Therefore, they arose and they fled at twilight and they left their camp intact. They left and left all their tents, their food. They left their horses, their donkeys, and they fled for their lives. And when the lepers, leprous men came to the outskirts of the camp, they went into one tent and ate and drank and carried from it silver and gold and clothes and went and hid them. Then they came back and entered into another tent and carried from there also. And they went and hid it. Now, that's where we're going to pause uh, today in our teaching as we begin on what the subject is, what partnering I'm sorry, the lesson is more good news, but the subject we're talking about today is what? Partnering with goodness. Partnering with goodness. Now, a partner is someone who is who is involved, someone who has a shared interest, someone who is invested in, someone who has bought into the goals, the ideas, the business, the plans of another entity. So you can have two partners, three, five, seven, ten, but you can't have one partner. In order for there to be a partnership, it has to be you and someone else. You have to have at least two people to have a partnership. And so I want to begin by helping you and I understand that we are in partnership with God, that God has voluntarily chosen to partner with humans in the fulfilling of his will and purpose. And not only just humans in general, but he's specifically chosen to partner with you and me as believers, those of us who've already received Jesus. He's partnering with us in the unfolding of his kingdom in the lives of people. Does that make sense? That God has chosen of his own will to involve us in his plan being fulfilled. So you and I are partners with God. We're co-laborers with God. We are joint heirs with Jesus. We are heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus. We are workers together with God. So I want to be want us to be very clear in the first principle is that we are partners with God. Therefore, God is partner with us. 
Does that make sense? It's very important that we get that order. We are partners with God. Therefore, God is partners with us. So as we partner with God in his agenda, then God also partners with us in our agenda, as long as our agenda doesn't contradict his agenda. Come on. That's that's the first principle. When we partner with God, God partners with us, but he will only partner with us to the extent that what we endeavor to do isn't in contradiction to his will and to his purpose. Does that make sense? So go and get that in your mind. I am not alone. I am a partner with God. I am in partnership with God. I am in partnership with his agenda, with his plan, with his purpose. You see, that's very important because he is in, in today's world. Well, what are we talking about? You know, our purpose, our calling, our assignment, our whatever, our whatever. Well, hold on for a second. What is God's purpose? What is God's assignment? What is God's will? See, as you and I partner with him, he in turn partners with us. That's the order. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All things are added unto you. So a lot of times the things that are you desire to see unfold in your life, they're not unfolding in your life because you're trying to get God to partner with you. But you haven't first partnered with God and God's agenda. So that being number one, that we are partners with him and he in turn is partners with us. Now, secondarily, we talked about what we mentioned that we're partners of goodness now, by goodness, I want you to write these things down and get these principles. Goodness, we mean benefit. We mean well-being. We mean fruitfulness. We mean productivity. We mean accomplishment. We mean vitality. That when we're talking about goodness, we're not just talking about something random. When we're talking about goodness, we're not talking about something sporadic. No, when we're talking about goodness, we're literally talking about something that that is in the core of a benefit, that it's not something that is just, you know, abstract. It's not something, well, I think it's good. You know when something is good or not. Now, understand that God does have a longer term view of goodness than we have of goodness because we're limited by time and space. We're limited by our own experience. We're limited by our own lifetime. I mean, I plan to live until at least 90. Does that make sense? But I'm limited to 90. I can't I can't experience anything past my death. Does that make sense? But God's view is what is eternal. He can see past my life, past your life and past all other lives because the Bible declares he knows the end from the beginning. So certainly God's perspective of goodness is far more vast than our perspective. But yet there are some foundational principles of goodness, and that is benefit, well-being, fruitfulness, productivity, prosperity, vitality. Those are those are core foundations of something that is good, which brings me to my next point. So we dealt with what partnership and we dealt with the basics and the basis of goodness. Now we have to understand with the antithesis of goodness, right? We have to understand the opposite of good. Now in our world, we typically say what good or bad, right? And in many instances, that could very well be the case. That bad is something that is not for your benefit, something that's not fruitful, something that's not productive, something that's not prosperous, some, something that is death or doesn't have vitality attached. Certainly that could be the case. Um, but when we think about good, I want you to think about it from, from a more biblical standpoint. Remember, bad is still close to the biblical perspective, but the more or the closer perspective is evil, that there's good and then there's evil. And by evil, we're not just talking about, listen to me very carefully, you're going to get this. We're not just talking about an outcome. We're not just talking about a result or that's an evil outcome or an evil result. We're literally talking about an influence. You need to hear what I just said, that when we're talking about the opposite of good. We're talking about an influence, something or an entity that is persuasive, something that is endeavoring to move something. Does that make sense? I just slid my iPad, right? That means I just ex exerted influence or power against the iPad to move it to a different direction. Now, why is that important? Because it helps us understand that goodness isn't just an outcome either. It's not just a result. That goodness is also an influence. Come on, write that in the chat. Come on, write it in the chat. Say goodness is an influence. Come on, drop it in there. Come on, come on, type. Come on, get those fingers going. Goodness is an influence. 
which means there is a force that is at work endeavoring to bring benefit, well-being, productivity, prosperity, and vitality. Just as there is an influence that is desiring to bring detriment, death, unfruitfulness, unproductivity, poverty. These are influences that good is not just an outcome and evil is not just an outcome. They are first influences. They are entities. Now, why am I saying that? Because you have to understand, and man, my time is moving, and I have to grasp that, and I want you to get this very clearly, that the kingdom of God and the influence of God's kingdom is only goodness. Oh, come on, get that right there. That you and I, we're born again and we're part of the kingdom of God. We are born of the spirit. We are now part of God's family. We are now members of God's household. We're now citizens of God's kingdom. And the influence that drives, the influence that permeates, the influence that is the essence of his kingdom is goodness. It's goodness. Now, remember, there is in the kingdom of darkness as well. And that the, the influence, the essence, the spirit that permeates the kingdom of darkness is evil. Now, again, when we think about evil, don't think pitchforks and horns and demons the way that we've seen in Hollywood, although that could very well be the case. But that's not the full story. Evil can also mean because someone's motives can be wrong, they can be doing outwardly the right action, but their influence or their intent or their motive is evil. Remember the Bible says, someone says what? Come eat and drink, but their heart is far from you, meaning their heart is evil, their heart is twisted. They're gonna manipulate you. They're gonna lure you in in to harm you. Does that make sense? So we can't just look at the outcome and then make judgments. We have to also look at the influence that is operating behind the scenes. I've said this before, and I'll say it again, that demons promote people just like angels promote people, that demons influence human promotion just like angels influence human promotion, which means we can't just look at the outcome of promotion and say, oh, look at God. Well, that could be the case or it could not be the case. It's based upon what the influence is. This is why this message is so important. And this is why I got the beginning to to bring this thing in is because when you and I are partnering with goodness, we are first partnering with a spirit, an attitude, a disposition, a mindset before we are partnering with producing certain outcomes or desiring certain outcomes. That that when I'm partnering with goodness, I am partnering with the Holy Ghost. Uh, Come on here. When I'm partnering with goodness, I'm partnering with the Holy Spirit. When I'm partnering with goodness, I'm partnering with the kingdom of God. When I'm partnering with goodness, I'm partnering with the mind of God, the character of God. I'm partnering with the nature, the influence that permeates God's kingdom, that that I am invested in. I am joined with. I have a, a vested interest in the outcome of goodness occurring in my community, in my family, in my church, in my household. Listen, you need to give God some praise right there. Come on, you need to, I mean, come on, open your mouth and say something. That's a good place to shout and rejoice because as a believer, your internal framework, your mindset, the way you think and reason and rationalize, it should be based upon the influence of the government of heaven, the influence of a good government, the influence of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, the Bible says, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are virtuous, whatsoever things are praiseworthy. He talks about what? Thinking on these things, allowing these things to to uh, to saturate our mind, to uh, affect our mental framework, to affect our mental disposition. Come on, bless the Lord right there that when we are partnering with goodness, Listen to me very carefully. We are partnering with hope. 
Come on. And that's where I want to begin to hang my hat and conclude our time uh, uh, today. Come on. We're partnering with hope because hope is an influence. Hope is a driving force. Hope is a mentality and attitude. Hope says things are bad, but I believe tomorrow can be better. Hope says things are challenging, but I believe the next 10 minutes can get better. You see, hope says I'm not going to be locked in to what's happening this moment because things can change the next moment or the next moment or the next moment or the moment after that. You see, this is what we find in 2 Kings chapter 7. We find in 2 Kings chapter 7 that these four leprous men give us a principle of how they are partnering with goodness. It gives us a principle because here we see these four leprous men are sitting at the entrance of the gate. Now you have to get the context. What's going on here? It's a famine in the land. They have been besieged by the enemy. Now I know that word besieged, we don't use that word, you know, in our in our modern time, but it literally means to be blocked in. It literally means to be to be surrounded by that you need to get water, you need to get food, you need to get uh, resources, but they box you in and they know that eventually you're going to surrender because or else you'll die because you can't get resources to come in. So when they were besieged or boxed in, it was famine, it was death, it was a lack of productivity, it was a lack of fruitfulness, a lack of vitality. Basically, they were experiencing an evil outcome. Remember we talked about earlier, the opposite of what is good is evil. So they were experiencing an evil outcome. They were experiencing an evil outcome. So how was God going to change this evil outcome? He changed this evil outcome by giving a prophecy, a word of hope, a word of inspiration, a word of motivation. And the prophet said, about this time tomorrow, there's going to be prosperity. About this time tomorrow, there's going to be benefit. About this time tomorrow, there's going to be fruitfulness. About this time tomorrow, there's going to be vitality. And the people were like, oh my goodness, what? God gave a word that powerful, that transforming? God gave a word like that? Oh my goodness, right? And one of the men said, oh, whatever. I know y'all, y'all not believing that guy. I, come on. Yeah, man, if God made windows in heaven, stuff like that's not going to happen, you know, et cetera. Right. So that's what's happening. That's that's the that's the influence that has now what hit the land. That's the influence that's hit the people. That's the influence that has what been been uh, propagated and spread abroad. But these leprous men didn't hear it. There was a word, but they didn't hear it. Did you hear it? There was a word, but they didn't hear it. But here they are sitting at the gate and they said one to another, why sit here and die? Now, I've got to I've got to close this out, but I need you to get this. Come on. Why sit here and die? They had three options. They could sit there and die. They could go into the city where there was what? More dearth and death and famine. Or they could surrender to the Syrians. The Syrians were the people who had what? Barricaded them in or besieged them. Now, here's the deal. Only one of them had hope attached to it. Y'all, I got to get out of here. Come on. Only one of them had hope attached to it. If they stayed there, they were going to die. If they went into the city, there was nothing else there but death either. But if they surrendered to the Syrians, at least there's a hope. Maybe they could keep us as prisoners of war. Maybe they keep us as captives and we'll be trapped, but at least we'll get what? Food and water. Does that make sense? Maybe they keep us alive, but if they kill us, then we're just going to die anyway. And here is the statement that I wrote down that I need you to get. And I've got to get out of here. Here is the statement that I wrote down that you've got to get that these four leprous men, even though they didn't directly hear the word, they are being affected by the word because it is a prophetic utterance. And God is supernaturally what moving upon them to act in a such a, in in a certain way to carry out his miracle. So let me say it again. God is supernaturally acting through them, influencing their heart and minds to think a certain way so that they can what help unfold God's kingdom. So much more there. I'm going to deal with that uh, next week. So much more there. But here's what I want you to get. I want you to get that because of what's happening around them, death, lack of benefit, lack of, you know, lack of vitality, unfruitfulness, lack of productivity, et cetera, evil. There had to be something in them that was working contrary to what was working around them. Death was around them, but life was in them. Come on. Difficulty was around them, but opportunity was on the inside of them. 
Come on. Desertion was around them, but productivity and prosperity was on the inside of them. Now, this occurred supernaturally because God moved upon them supernaturally. They didn't even know it, but he moved upon them supernaturally to think and feel this way, to act in such a way, to carry out his will. But here is the statement. I've got to get out of here. They made a best case and worst case scenario. Worst case. Worst case. We experience what we would have experienced by doing nothing. So if they stayed right there, what was going to happen? The same thing they were always going to experience, which is death. If they went into the city, what was going to happen? The same thing that would have happened if they stayed right there, which is death. So what they said was the worst case is we can experience what we would have experienced just by doing nothing, which is death. So what is the best case? What is the best opportunity? The best opportunity is we can surrender to the Syrians and something good could happen. Oh, my God, I got to get out of here. The best case scenario is we can surrender to the Syrians, take a risk, right? And something good could happen. And that's where I want to end tonight. That's what I want to hang my hat. That's where I want to drop the mic and challenge you and encourage you as a believer. That as you and I are partnering with the goodness, what does that mean we're doing? In our mindset, in our emotions, and in our actions, it means that we are taking the best case scenario. Even if that is a quote unquote risky situation. That doing nothing is the worst risk. Doing nothing is the worst decision. Being indecisive is the worst decision. That when you are partnering with goodness, when you're partnering with God's agenda, when you're partnering with God's will, when you're partnering with God's purpose, what it means is at the foundational level is that you are partnering with hope. What situation, let me rephrase it, let me say it a different way. What decision gives you the most hope? What decision gives you the most opportunity? What decision creates the possibility of a benefit, the possibility of vitality, the possibility of fruitfulness, the possibility of productivity? What decision, even if it's quote unquote risky, puts you in a position where something good can happen? Oh my gosh, come on here. You see, this is the foundational level of what it means to partner with goodness. It means that in the midst of dearth and famine and lack of opportunity, et cetera, it means that you start asking yourself the question, okay, Marcus, what is the what is the best possible choice I can make in this situation? What is the best possible choice I can make that will create the best possible opportunity for God's will to come to pass? What is the best possible decision I can make to show God I, I trust him? What is a faith decision that I can make in this situation? You see, this is how you partner with goodness. See, you're not just waiting on goodness. You are partnering with goodness. You see the difference? These four leprous men, they were not waiting for something to happen. They partnered with goodness. They partnered with hope. Their action said, I'm going to keep moving. Come on. If I die, I'm going to die in motion. Come on. Talk to me here. If I'm going to fail, I'm going to fail in motion. If I'm going to fail, I'm going to fail falling forward. I'm not going to fail standing still or falling backwards. I've got to be preaching to somebody on this digital winner circle. Come on here. That when I'm partnering with goodness, I'm invested in and have a vested interest in the kingdom of God unfolding in my life and in my family. And I'm partnering with the influence of his kingdom, the Holy Spirit, who only influences us towards good, benefit, vitality, well-being, fruitfulness, and productivity. I'm partnering with the Holy Spirit. And then practically my soul and my mind is shaped by goodness in such a way that I am making decisions that create the best possible scenario, the best possible outcome for God to show up and move in my life, that very few times God tells you to stand still. Most of the time, God is telling you to take courageous action. That could mean forgiveness. That could mean going to the doctor. That could mean apologizing. That could mean walking in humility. Do you see what I'm saying? But it means you're taking steps that create hope. I mean, practically, 
You and somebody are at odds. You're waiting for them to come and apologize to you. What's the courageous thing? Go and initiate that reconciliation. See, if you do nothing, nothing can occur. But when you're partnering with goodness, which is partnering with hope, you are making a decision that says, I'm going to move forward and I'm going to create a situation for heaven to get involved by doing what? By partnering with hope. And we're going to dig even more into these four leprous men and we're going to dig into it on Sunday and you're going to see how it relates to family and parenting. And I believe God's going to continue to work miracles, signs and wonders in our lives. Oh, hold on for a second. Hold on for a second. You know what? No, I'm going to wait. I'm going to share that on Sunday. I'm going to share it on Sunday. Yeah, I'm going to share it on Sunday. You say, oh, Bishop, don't do that. No, I'm going to share it on Sunday. Come on, share it on Sunday. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you as we partner with goodness in Jesus' name.